Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board on Tuesday denies Uber's motion for reconsideration on its decision to suspend the ride-hailing company for one month. Uber filed the motion earlier the same day. Before the LTFRB's decision on its motion, Uber said it will continue operations until the motion is resolved. LTFRB board member Eileen Nezada says the transport body ordered law enforcers to apprehend Uber drivers violating the suspension. Follow Raptor.com for continuing updates. The National Bureau of Investigation on Tuesday arrests the alleged middleman in the 6.4 billion pesos worth of smuggled shabu from China at the Senate. A rape case against Kenneth Dong was filed at the Paranaque Court. Dong is brought to the NBI after his arrest. Dong, during the hearing on the Shabu smuggling incident, says he was only an acquaintance of President Rodrigo Duterte's son and Davao City Vice Mayor Paulo Duterte. The younger Duterte is being linked to smuggling. The NBI also filed drugs-related complaints against customs broker Mark Taguba, Dong, and seven others over the Shabu smuggling incident. The complaints for violation of Section 4 of the Drugs Law, or importation of drugs, were filed before the Justice Department on Monday. It was Taguba who earlier told the House inquiry that the younger Duterte is name-dropped by individuals he transacted with inside the Bureau of Customs. Taguba also named customs officials whom he said were involved in corruption inside customs. Taguba's statements triggered resignations inside the Bureau and remained the subject of marathon hearings in both chambers of Congress. Justice Secretary Vitaliano Aguirre earlier said there is basis for Taguba to apply for the Witness Protection Program, but his qualifications will still have to be assessed. Customs Commissioner Nicanor Faildon says he failed to address corruption in the Bureau of Customs in his first year as his hand-picked officials only assumed office in December last year and in January. Faldon gives his explanation after Senator Antonio Trillanes asked why corruption continued to be rampant in the agency under his watch. He says, quote, The people I have worked with there are the people that I suspect doing this tara, so how would I designate them to be the one conducting the investigation? Customs is known for having the tara system, where an importers give grease money to customs personnel on a certain day each week for the release of their misdeclared and undervalued cargoes. Feldon says he knew of the existence of the system in the BOC even before he assumed its top post, but he says it was impossible for him to do it on his own. Magdala Representative Gary Alejano on Monday expresses alarm over extraordinary activities of Chinese ships near Pagasa Island in the West Philippine Sea. Alejano says he is concerned China is eyeing to occupy sandbars near Pagasa Island. Filipinos living in Pagasa Island would go to the sandbars to fish and picnic. Alejandro raises this to Defense Secretary Delfin Lorenzana during the House deliberations on the department's budget. Alejandro says the swarm is composed of two frigates, a Coast Guard vessel, two large fishing vessels, and numerous maritime militias. The Chinese ships have supposedly been in the area since Saturday. He says he has information that the Chinese ships blocked a ship of the Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources from going near the area. Pag-asa, one of the biggest islands in the Spratlys, is occupied by about 100 Filipinos. Chinese ships are always spotted near the island because of its proximity to Subi Reef, one of the seven reefs China reclaimed. But the Chinese ships have not been spotted too close to the sandbars located less than three nautical miles north of Pag-asa. Lorenzana says, quote, It would be a very serious thing if the Chinese will occupy any of the islands, even the islands that are far away. Alejandro says he is worried China will use maritime militias, civilian fishermen, to attack Pagasa Island. Pop superstar Taylor Swift on Monday wins her sexual assault lawsuit against a former radio DJ she accused of groping her. Swift was awarded the nominal $1 in damages she had asked for in her complaint that David Mueller had fondled her buttocks during a photo opportunity in 2013. She says, quote, My hope is to help those whose voices should also be heard. Therefore, I will be making donations in the near future to multiple organizations that help sexual assault victims defend themselves. Swift's aides complained to the DJ's radio station of the incident in 2013, and he lost his job. Mueller launched a $3 million lawsuit against Swift in 2015 for loss of earnings, arguing it was her allegations that got him sacked. Swift countersued for sexual assault. 